happened was I had kind of a revelation moment. I was in a concert. And I was in the very, very back row. And you can turn around if you want. It's all right. Good stretch. I'm in the very back row. I couldn't be any further back. I look down to the front. I see these four college girls with their hands in the air like this, and they're screaming. And I think, that's where I want to be. Not just because there were four girls there, but because they were having fun, and because it was a different energy there. And then it hit me. This is my whole life. I've been playing it safe in the back, watching from a distance disengaged, didn't want to get called on in class, didn't want to participate. The front row message is one of inspiration for many. It's what gives people the courage to step up and get involved. This program is extremely popular for leadership events, retreats, orientations are huge, any lecture series, really any place where a college or university values having their students step up and get involved. But I'll tell you what, it's a very different experience in the front row. What's your name? Caitlin, if I gave the rest of my talk right here, Caitlin, would it be a drastically different experience for you right now? It'd be hard. <laughs> the metaphor of being in the back and, and watching it happen versus being a participant in living life in the front row is what this program is all about. Living life in the front row became about a lifestyle, it was a way of doing things. Living life in the front row is also a fun way to live. It's also a productive way to live. Do you know that if you didn't change anything about your study habits, but all you did is change where you sat in the class, if you sat in the front, your grades go up. Prove it. It's just because you can't check out. Sometimes we need to force ourselves to be engaged. But that's better for our lives. It would drive me crazy if I had to give the same speech over and over and over again. But the fact that this is interactive, it's a conversation, it's always changing, that's what keeps it energizing and electric for the audience. Hey, who loves to have fun? Say, oh yeah. Oh yeah. Who loves good jokes? Oh yeah. Number one reason I see that people don't succeed in their college years is because they're afraid of what they look like in front of others. And I was walking down a hallway and I passed the guy carrying a guitar with his hands over and I kept saying to myself, this guy's hoping he runs into Dave Matthews. And I blow him off, I walk right past him in the hallway until I stop dead in my tracks and it hits me. Who was it? Yeah. I just blew off Dave Matthews because I was judging him. I learned that we need to treat everybody like a rock star. That's what we need to do. Treat everybody we meet like they're a rock star. People need a reminder that life is short and we have to grab it and make the most of it. This was one of the best speeches that I've ever heard. I really, what I learned here, I'm going to take for the rest of my life. One of my biggest difficulties was overcoming the fear. And here I learned how to do all the things that I'm really scared to do. I really was the best speech ever. So what advice do you have for today's college students to overcome some of the challenges in the workforce today? They're either going to be a spectator, safely observing from the back, or they're going to be a participant up front, fully engaged. What really makes my heart sing is at the end of a program when a student walks up to me, gives me a giant hug, and tells me life will never be the same, that they're committed to living life in the front row from this day forward. Now what I want you to do is in a second, I'm going to have you jump up out of your seat and you're going to hug the person to your left and hug the person to your right. But not like this. Not like this. Don't hug like, oh, who's this guy? Why is he here? Reading the tweets, the Facebook posts, and the emails at the end, I'm just excited people uh, are moved to share.